Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Canada Cup Season 7, brought to you by Soylent, the meal replacement that tastes like deliciousness. Not today versus FDL, the best of one to get our madness started tonight. Grant, the winner, has a tough cookie awaiting. Shazam, the big boys, going to be coming up in the round after this. How you feeling tonight coming into our first best of one, my man? Mm, feeling pretty good. Uh, FDL versus not today. I think it's uh, a lot of people have FDL, but... I don't think it's going to be a walkover. Not today, actually. Uh, just knocked Drag Neal out of Star Series, so uh, they're looking pretty All crispy right. themselves. There you go. All right, right into it here. Beastmaster Doom banned out by Not Today. Bounty Hunter Alchemist taken out by FDL. That first pick Phoenix, the big team fighter. I'm loving it. We've been seeing some first pick Phoenix uh, in Canada Cup training. nights prior, and for good reason, great team fighter. Grant, I love these best of ones. I have to say, I, my inner Merlini is coming out, and I'm starting to become a, a big fan of these all-in, one-game, fuck it, YOLO, let's go right for the throne. Did you see that highlight from SEA this morning, man? That's nah, I, I did. Yeah, that was, I don't know, that's that's the bear, dude. The, the back door means nothing to, to a, an animal. Yeah, man, that stuff was nuts. Life Stealer, though, one of the better heroes to deal with the Phoenix. You've got that rage, so you can get rid of those Fire Spirit debuffs. And get some right clicks in on uh, on that egg. Not a bad hero here. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, when Not Today beat Drag Neal, they played against Phoenix twice. And we know Phoenix in the last couple, like, week, we have seen it like an insanely high win rate to beat it twice in a row. But then I think Not Today might, might know something other teams don't. I guess we'll see. Yeah. Well, another good hero to, uh, well, I, I guess it's okay against the Phoenix and with the Phoenix. Good control in general. Great pairing with the Life Stealer. You got Natural and Fest Bomb Carrier there, Mr. Bat Rider. Yep, yeah, uh, just easy. Jump in, grab someone, Life Stealer pops out, and just blam. Mm -hmm. What's the deal with Bat Rider? How come some regions are, are really feeling his power and others aren't? I feel like uh, all the C games I've been casting, there's been such a little pressure or uh, such a little attention on the Bat Rider. Uh, I think after the nerfed. Ooh, sorry. My Whoa. voice got really deep there. I think Whoa. people realize that stacking camps in the offlane and even the magic resistance, like, it wasn't nerfed as hard as people thought. And I, th I think teams are just finally figuring that out, that Batrider can still go offlane, just go to the jungle, and do stacks a little bit slower. But he's still getting, like, his blink dagger, like, eight, seven, eight minutes in, even with that nerf to the jungle. And yeah. I, I think it was just teams overestimating how nerfed the jungle was. And the few Batrider games I've seen, there's definitely been a variety in his builds. I've seen some now skip the lasso until, like, level 9, level 10, go for even, like, a drum of endurance, um, like, brown boot, yeah. bottle, drum, and then Yule Scepter, Blink Dagger, like, some crazy builds like that. So, I don't know. It's not just about rushing that Blink Dagger, showing some of his yeah. uh, versatility, I guess. Pretty good against Nature's Prophet and clear out uh, pushing fairly effectively. Remaining. Yeah, and I think I guess it could be a middle bat rider too. That the mm -hmm. hero can pretty much go anywhere. Well, I mean, he could go in the safe. I don't know why you would, but yeah, and nature's probably that is MJW's probably favorite hero to play, and we I think we've we have seen that a lot from him. He's one of the few we, other teams have actually been falling off it, but FDL continues to first second pick a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a tried and true classic, and we've seen the versatility of this hero as well. You can go right into the jungle, farm up quite a bit. You can dominate some heroes in lane. You know, you've got those tree ends to scout things out, intercept stacks, block camps, do all sorts of trickery. And, well, that global presence early on definitely can't be underestimated. But where do we yep. go from here, Grant? DP banned out by not today. All right, another good team fighter. Yeah, they're thinking about team fight. I mean, literally not today as Bat Rare Life Story. That's just a good pickoff combo. It's not good versus like a five man lineup, so not today's just gonna be banning out those kind of uh Beastmaster Death Prophet heroes where you just group up his five and push the base at twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. They don't wanna allow that. I've been really liking the Medusa Phoenix combo. Drop the egg, hit yourself a, a stone gaze, and they're slowed up and either get turned to stone or they get stunned up by the supernova or sometimes both it's pretty nasty uh, all right you just said you like medusa dude i don't know i you know, not uh, i don't know about you as a person not hot on the dusa man that mid lane dusa go snake <sighs> Ooh. The, the, I, I do, the snake stats build is the only way to go but man that hero just it, it's so one-dimensional to me i i, I can't have fun watching it yeah one-dimensional in the sense that she wins hey, hey that's what i'm oh. saying i was just actually uh, I was talking to somebody, they're like, I, I hate how teams still use smurf accounts. I'm like, well, if people let them, I mean, you, you, you play you play to win. Use every advantage you can get. And, yeah. <laughs> Picking a Medusa in a best of one is definitely one of those advantages. Yeah, that's true, actually. That's uh, 
Hmm. What what are the potential like scary heroes that can come out in a best of one? Like if like North American classics, like Omni Knight could could he make an appearance here? Are these Omni Knight teams? I don't, I don't really think so. You could. I mean, I think more than likely, Puck's not banned. I'll probably see FDL take that. Uh, a surprise pick could. I actually be a Medusa for FDL. I know Beza likes playing it, and it is really good versus Life Stealer and Bat Rider if you have quick quick reaction times. And they actually banned the puck themselves, so I just look dumb. Hmm. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of puck bans recently in both Canada Cup and uh, the Sea Games I've been covering. Just such a, yeah. it fits into this stage of the draft so well. There's almost every game where I'm like, well, you know, something like a puck here could be pretty good. Oh wait, it was third banned by one of these teams. Okay, never mind. But nobody seems to care about puck enough to really first pick it. I, I can't think of any team right now that's prioritizing puck that much. Yeah. Did Did you watch the? Uh... Who is, was it DC Complexity when they picked the Misery Support Puck? I don't think I saw that. It was, it was, it was a game. They, they, they ran it weirdly. They ran it, uh, it was with the Meepo. So Meepo was middle to level three, went to the jungle. Misery Support Puck just took over middle, and they, they won a game with the Support Puck. I, I don't know. Wow. I, I didn't expect the end of that story to be, and then they won. <laughs> so, uh, wow. I, that might be a buy going back to check out, but... Here you go. Not today. Another tried and true classic. Uh, the Witch Doctor. No specific synergy with these two heroes, but just good all around good laner. Some sustainability for the Life Stealer and the Witch Doctor. Or pardon me, and the Bat Rider, and uh, some good team fight with that ultimate. So, hmm. Yeah, he's just one of the literally might be the best stun in the game. Besides, like Line, who has a stun and a Voodoo. Witch Doctor's like lone stun is the best in the game, especially early game and. That heal in team fights. I think we've seen team fights seem to be going longer and longer. Like I don't know why yeah. if it's just the patch, but I mean having that witch doctor heal on you, something like that, is insane. I mean, same with Phoenix, just having that heal always on you has been great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and here we go. Invoker picked up by FDL. I feel like there's been a resurgence of Quas Wex invokers recently, coming back. Where so more often than not now, I'm seeing that first point in Quas and Tornado EMP all game, no sun strikes. Yeah, I think it really depends. Like, versus a Batrider, you you can do any and do decent. I think if you do Quaswex Invoker, you do have to get, like, a super hard-type carry like Medusa, so we might actually end up seeing that. But yeah, I, I just enjoy, enjoy watching Invoker altogether. Yeah, I mean, the X-Sword, of course, uh, pairs with, with good Sunstrike setup, you know, laning stuns, and you can really propel yourself more, but... Some invokers even skipping uh, the, the Midas. Like, we used to see Quaswex go for stuff like an Orchid. You know, you just rush that Orchid, you start hunting around with Ghost Walk and look for kills that way. And that play style has seemed to fall out of Vogue as well. I'm not totally sold on the Quaswex invoker. It's pretty good against the, the Witch Doctor, honestly. Long-range spell to get rid of uh, the, the channeling of the ultimate. Could also be a deny pick. If they wanted the Medusa, it's good to get the, the EMP on their squad. Also, not bad against Phoenix. It's a, a long-range tool that can interrupt the Sun Ray. So, hero they're comfortable on that's also not bad against, you know, a lineup they already have. Yeah, uh, and we know uh, CCNC plays a, a pretty good invoker. And I think the biggest thing, like you said, they have two uh, instances of global presence. Now, the Invoker, if they want to go Sunstrike build and the Nature's Prophet, so they might just want to take over that early game by using the numbers advantage. Yep. Great team fighter here. What do you think about Earth Spirit right now? Uh, I, I don't think he's really changed much, but teams have seemed to uh, have kind of... He's gone from first pick to sometimes second pick, sometimes even last pick. Yeah, and I'm not really sure why. I still think he's decent. Obviously, the boulder, the uh, boulder smash slow, has hurt him a little bit. But he, I mean, he can still roam around very well. Yeah, I mean the movement speed nerf hurt as well. But we see the brown boots wind lays pretty commonly, and that kind of makes up for it. Once he gets the uh, gets the oove going as well with all those, there are some heroes you can pick on here. Nature's prophet invoker, potentially gankable targets. Uh, the faceless void though, perhaps not. So. What's going to be the setup for FDL? Is this just clearly a support Phoenix here? Yeah, it's a support Phoenix. And safe lane void, huh? This, yeah, looks like it's going to be a safe lane. I mean, it could be a safe lane nature's profit. They might, like, I mean, you can aggro. Phoenix one of the heroes that can, like, let any hero aggro try lane, but it's definitely going to be a support Phoenix, and then who knows where NP and Faceless Void go. Yep. All right, final picks and bans on the way here. Not today. Take out Dazzle, another hero that's been forgotten about, at least in the games I've been looking at. Interesting to see him final banned here. I guess it would have been okay with this FDL lineup. I don't quite see the, the Dazzle synergy here. 
Yeah, I think the Dazzle will just start if they, they were maybe thinking about that that aggressive try line too. Going against a Phoenix Dazzle Void, yeah, there would just be true. no way to kill. Even maybe a Nature's Prophet, you just heal bomb somebody. It would it would just be an unkillable lane, and your Nyx would find no farm. And I think, okay. judging by their picks, the Lifestealer needs farm. Right now, they're single core. Yeah. I mean, what could they grab for the mid that kind of pairs nicely with this? I'm tempted to say Puck, honestly. I know it's been banned out, but... You know, a nice uh, blink dagger carrier I, for the the life stealer would be pretty nice. Storm Spirit, another good hero that not today could utilize. Great with the life stealer, pretty smart ban from FDL. Yeah, I think they might get nervous about maybe other physical damage. Not today, I'm not, because I believe their carry player is Jericho, who is not here. They have their manager actually standing in for them, so I, I'm not sure about his hero pool actually. Yeah, Masoku too. Who knows? Could be anybody. Could be. Could be you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be. Whew. I'm sure all and the Oracle betting sites C would love that. Yeah. Oracle. <laughs> so another another healing. Uh, I think they might actually go with the the tri lane, the aggressive tri lane. Two healers, a faceless so. void, and a, maybe a nature's prophet. And that life store might not find any farm. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Not today. Take oh, that the makes PL. sense. Yeah. Okay. So PL mid off lane bat rider. Is that what we're looking at here? Yeah, it looks like. I mean, P we've seen PL dominates Invoker. It's like a. a an 85-15 matchup for PL. It's it's really in his favor, but obviously the Invoker doesn't need that much farm. If he goes Quas Wex, he just needs levels, mm -hmm. and he just has to sit back, not die to the PL, maybe roaming Earth Spirit, and he'll be fine. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that matchup. It's one of those where you you look you think if you still think kind of think of the PL as that weak hard carry only always only scary in late game, but his base damage is ridiculous. He gets yep. a poor man's shield. He can actually go blow for blow pretty easily. It's really hard for the Invoker to harass him out. And then you just start spamming out that Spirit Lance. And all of a sudden, the Invoker's feeling the pain. It's uh, it's pretty solid. But what are you thinking here? I, I like this FDL lineup. I think they've just got the obvious team fight advantage here. You've got Nova. You've got uh, the Chronosphere. All the damage from the Invoker to throw in there. I, they, they've got a lot of nice synergy here. Even the Prophet, he can go for that kind of right-click oriented build, the Phase Drum, maybe Orchid into Sheep Stick. I think a little bit easier for FDL to execute here. For not today, these lanes need to go pretty well, and they could end up in this situation where you've got a Life Stealer, PL, and Bat Rider all kind of under farmed, and that's not going to be fun to play against this lineup. Yeah, I think, I think you're pretty much right there. FDL, I think they just have a better overall lineup. They they can win early game. They can win mid and late. For not today, if they lose the laning phase, they're going to have a lot of problems dealing with all the uh, the global presence on FDL and just the, the five-man power they have. Yeah, the global presence, another good thing to point out. Uh, the Invoker, assuming he goes Exhort, you've got that damage, but the Nature's Prophet and... You know, even uh, the Phoenix, not quite global, but long range with the Icarus Dive, you can come out of nowhere. And, you know, when you think, oh, it's just avoid farming in a lane if there's a Phoenix hiding nearby, it's kind of three and a half heroes coming your way. Not today, up to some a, trickery yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. Hiding in the Roche Pit. Void hasn't scouted it out yet. Still 15 seconds till the rune spawns. Yeah, but that mm. ward by Dyer sees, sees them moving around, so they know if they want to take this fight or not, and I think they do. Yeah, they're going to go right in on him. Void, holding on to his skill points for now. Invoker on the high ground needs to be really careful here. The battle begins. Looks like they'll just hand it over. PL going to be the one to pick it up. And up top, it's going to go to the Bat Rider. Both bounties for not today. It's a dream start. Here you go. Right in onto Oracle. The Sunray doing a lot of work here. They're all lined up in this small corridor. It's not enough to heal up the Oracle. Lifestealer draws the first blood. Now the Earth Spirit's on the run. Void has a time walk. Does he actually want to use it here, though? boulder away and earth spirit will live brilliant start for not today they get a first blood on their life stealer and both bounty runes doesn't get much better than that yeah it doesn't matter it's a lot of going there he could have maybe time walked and killed that void but i believe Vo void's roll was up and he didn't want to i mean it's a long cooldown to level one for that time walk yeah and it, it turns out not today is going to be the one aggressive trialing so i called there would be one i mean on the wrong team but i think this is FDL doesn't mind this lane. I mean, now that they're down a lot of gold, they might, but... Yeah. Interesting. I wouldn't have thought that Not Today would put the aggro try here. So that'll put the Bat Rider in the safe lane. He's having a tough time against this Nature's Prophet. He's got a lot of stacks of sticky up, but he's getting harassed hard by these tree ends. The idea, I guess, of course, is to get the Bat Rider's Blink Dagger ASAP and secure his farm, but we'll see how he does against the Nature's Prophet. This try lane, yeah, I guess it's pretty good. Witch Doctor Earth Spirit... 
A lot of damage output, some mobility, some decent setup with the paralyzing cask. I could see this working out for not today. Yeah, but it depends how they how they're gonna deal with the, these poles. And it looks like they can't really do anything. They're just gonna stay in lane and let the wave push up. Maybe try to pull the uh, the big camp to themselves. Yeah. Well, so far so good. Mid lane going about as you predicted. Invoker getting stomped on by the PL. Look at the 73 plus two compared to the 51 plus 12 of the Invoker. It's such a big advantage. Yeah, and he just, the Invoker does no damage versus uh, a poor man shield Invoker who gets pulled tangos as well. And yeah. You just keep throwing lances out. And what, the Invoker can, what, throw out a cold snap and, like, a couple autos? And like, that's the best harass he has early. Yeah, this is pretty brutal. Only two last hits on the Invoker. He will, of course, be able to recover. So it's one of these lanes where you expect to lose, and you can always recover from the jungle. Down bottom, Witch Doctor caught by the Fortune's End. Sunray coming in, but now Ben Jazz goes right in onto Stan King. This could be another kill coming out for the Dire side. One more auto attack, and they get the Oracle, but he can't quite find it. Now Lifestealer turns the other way, and he'll just have to about face and make it out. All right, a close call, but the Not Today tri lane's broken up here. They'll rotate out their Earth Spirit. He bumps into an invisibility rune at the top spawn. Not sure what he'll be able to make of this, though. Invoker, although he's not farming well, not an easy target to gank. Yeah, he's not, but if he doesn't know anyone's near him, I mean, no one scouted that invisibility rune. CC and C could be in a lot of Shit, trouble. Yeah, up top. My god. Massive kill. <laughs> the nature's profit. He died so fast. They're going to go right in on the CC. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, he made it easy for him. Very forward positioning and. Earth Spirit could just walk right in and pick him up. Yeah, and wow, that is... So that's a kill in every lane for not today. I mean, you can literally almost... They, they are winning every lane, judging by the CS scores. I mean, they got Hell both yeah. bounties as well. Not today is looking good, and this is... I mean, uh, after their win, I, I watched the replays against Inverse Drag. You know, I wasn't... I, that's a big upset, them winning, but... Oh, and they're going in on Franz. He'll get away. Yep. Icarus dive out. And they won a, a best of three against Drag Dealer, or was it just a best of one? Yeah, it was best of three. They won wow. two games in a row. They played two Phoenixes, and they won both games. That's what was the biggest surprise to me. Not wow. today. is They're looking good. Ben Jazz, ben Jazz and Leo Style and Jericho have all three been playing. I mean, one of them's not here tonight. But those three have been playing together for, like, almost two years now on Dialcom and all that. So mm -hmm. they have a lot of synergy. Well, we'll see it tonight. It could be uh, quite the night for them if they beat FDL and then go right into beating Shazam. I think the, the odds right now, it's Shazam versus whoever wins, and it's like 85, 86% Shazam. So could get interesting. Some some upset betters. Many rares to be lost. Yeah, Canada Cup is known for the upsets. The Evernova versus Complexity 99 to 1% matchup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Franz I remember that, in trouble actually. Again. Yeah, that was good. Franz actually gets initiated on here. They've got another stun. The Witch Doctor comes just in time. No Icarus dive out, and Franz will fall. 4-0, not today, hanging on to their lead. So far, so good with this aggro tri lane, and uh, as I'm blathering on about that, we'll see a kill up top on the Bat Rider. Looks like he was able to pick that one up with a Sun Strike, but the setup came from the Prophet and the Oracle. Finally, they get on the scoreboard. Yeah, that's just a global present. You're gonna need, they're going to need to abuse uh, the numbers game to a, after after the losing laning phase. They're still in the laning phase. They have a chance, but oh, middle lane again. Yeah, this Invoker going to fall, no doubt about it. No point in Wex. No way he can Ghost Walk out of this one. Sunstrike does come through. Actually connects on the Earth Spirit. They're going to be able to turn this around. Maybe Leo style getting low. He eats himself a Fairy Fire, and he will live. The Invoker does end up going down, and Leo style gets credit for the kill. They make it out, but just barely. A good effort from FDL to try to turn that one around. Yeah, and th this is the problem with the Faceless Void is your safe lane carry. He has no really catch-up mechanism with the... Uh, I mean, he can't just go to the jungle. He is a Quelling Blade, and he still jungles so slow. He can't AoE farm at all, and if he's in a losing lane, it, he needs a lot to catch up. Yeah, it's true. I wonder if he's thinking about a Midas here with this Gloves of Haste to try and go for some sort of recovery, or if it's just the beginning of Power Treads. Either way, you're right. The one th good thing, though, is that they can start setting up kills as soon as he hits six with the nature of the, the global presence, the Sun Strike and the Wrath of Nature. Bottom. Oh, God, Witch Doctor. So much damage coming his way. The Sun Strike's there. It's on the money. And Witch, Dark falls, or Witch Doctor falls. rather. Ben Jazz comes back in, gets a couple right clicks onto the Phoenix. Defensive Icarus dive back. And that'll be the end of it. Another quick pick for FDL. Middle again. Two to five. Oh, wait. Back on the Invoker. Are they actually going to find this one? Masoku, two on the run. But Leo Style still going in deep. He's got another Spirit Lance. And the Earth Spirit actually snipes it with a boulder kick forward. All right. Action all over the place here. Grant, six minutes in. And not today is striking hot. 
Yeah, I think the biggest thing here is the best thing about going against, like, you don't mind giving up an Earth Spear on the dire side. It's so easy to ward and counter him, but Radiant doesn't have a ward on their side of the hill. This Earth Spear just, the first kill is invisibility. The last two have just been him running from his hill, which I think FDL should have warded. Yeah, that's a really good point. They're going to start rotating their supports around. Uh, I think they're going to try to keep them nearby. Seeing this Invoker is going to be coming a weak spot. He's picked up two kills, which is nice, but he's already died three times. Not sure what item build he's going for because he doesn't have enough item to or enough gold to invest in anything. I imagine the Midas. I mean, that is the core for Exhort Invoker, but with only 300 gold in the bank, it's seven minutes with no progress towards the item besides that. This is going to be rocky. Now in the top lane, NJW getting dove past the tower. There's a lasso. It's going to pull him down, and it's more than enough for a kill. But now they come back in looking for some counter kills themselves. The Sunray doing some decent damage, but Batrider goes for the TP out, and he will make it. On the other side, Masoku 2, the mysterious Earth Spirit player, makes it to the high ground, and he should be okay also. Though he doesn't have a TP, he is kind of in an awkward position here. He's just going to roll down. Okay. Yeah, that's a really good start for not today. Obviously, I mean, this is the start we said they needed. They have to win the laning phase because... FDL definitely has the, the better way, way, way late game. And even team fight. So not today just has to get this pickoffs, and they're doing a good job of it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, when we were saying that they need to win the laning phase, if they were doing half as well, I'd say this is going pretty well for them here. Wow. Void sets it up onto the Witch Doctor. Sunstrike comes through, and Bean that lasted bash. gets credit with it. Yeah, that was pretty gnarly. Gets his power treads there, and... Three to seven. Still a huge deficit, though. It's 3,500 net worth, 2K experience at only the eight-minute mark. And again, this Invoker, just non-stop aggression coming his way. Yeah, the only good thing about this for FDL is their supports are actually doing better than not today's supports, like, level-wise and whatnot. A lot of the farms just on the PL. Like, he's almost level nine at eight minutes in. Yeah, that's true. I mean, both supports for not today level four. The Phoenix is actually the lowest in the game, though. Franz is still just a humble level three with the Tranquil Boots. So not a huge deficit there, but a fair point nonetheless. Still a little ways off those ultimates. No Death Ward, no Magnetize, and those are key ultimates on these supports. Kind of transforms the heroes. Oh, thinking about a dive on the Invoker, but they see the Sunray. You know, I was making the joke, and I was casting C Dota earlier about it being the Win Ray. Because it's so good, and everyone thought I was saying Wind Ray. Like, I was confusing the elements of what kind of ray it is. <laughs> oh, no, it's not the Sun Ray. Or <laughs> the Wind Ray. Or what if they knew you were saying Wind Ray, and they're just trolling you? Well, it's possible, Grant, but I <laughs> was going to chalk it up to language barrier and culture difference. So, to be uh, fair, I don't know. The Sun is actually part of the wind. If we are going by Captain Planet Lore, <laughs> then you would not be in the wrong. Well, and he was I mean... Canadian, right? Yeah, I'm sure he was. I mean, Captain Planet lore is really all that matters here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Life Stealer working on his arm. Oh, Stan King Bottom is looking in trouble here. Yeah. He, uh, he no, definitely no, is. Maybe not. Who's, who's Leshric, by the way? I, I like that. Stan King dot Leshric. Oh, it was his old friend. He used to he used to duo Q back when he was only no. He used to only play Stan, like he was a Sand King spammer, like two thousand games on it, and he played with a guy named Leshrick who only played Leshrack. Wow. I guess he's just giving a shout out to his old friend. They had really creative names, but that's yeah, cute. Stan King Leshrick, yeah, it is. That's like more than friends, man. That's like Blood Brothers type shit right there. You know, that's you might not play Dota anymore, buddy, but I got your back. Never give yeah, up, never like, surrender. I made it and you didn't, but here you go. You can break, you can live vicariously like, through my tag. Oh, Bat Rider up top. Thought about having a go on the Prophet, but realizes he's in too deep and just TPs out. Okay. A brave man. Wow. 10 minute armlet phase boots on uh, Ben Jazz. He is pretty far. I guess we expected that, though. Yeah. He's in great shape. This aggro try worked out pretty well. I mean, they didn't destroy the Void, but they set up a fair bit of farm for the Life Stealer, And just having the supports in this kind of aggressive position worked out pretty well for Not Today. Witch Doctor halfway through five. Did the Tome of Knowledge come out yet? Did they eat it? Did they read it? Somebody did. They're both level five now, so... One's in stock through. for the Dire... Uh, the Radiant side, yeah. The Radiant side still has theirs, but Dire ate it. Yep. Uh oh, invoke. Oh, the bomb. That is so annoying. Here we go. Uh oh, Chronosphere down bottom. Sunstrike comes in. It'll connect. Bat Riders, the first one to fall. Franz keeping them all alive. The Invoker finally goes down. Benjaz trying to do what he can, but the Life Stealer will not survive the onslaught. It's a one for two. 
And that one wow. came from the uh, PL soloing the Invoker mid. So that's <laughs> poor guy. And you know their team's like, yeah, we just got a two for zero trade. We killed the we killed two of their cores, and then it's like, wait, what? PL, PL just got yeah. a tower? Oh, Jesus! Yeah, okay, he is. Who's a travel Aquila in one K bottle? Oh my goodness, he is. He's quite disgusting. Quite the farm little fun. man. Yeah. I'm gonna start doing and this in my pub games. Somebody insta pits invoke and be like, "All right, PL mid." It's not like it's hard either. You literally just spam spirit lance and last hit creeps. Like it's a pretty, yeah, you, pretty you easy lane matchup. So you need the two tangos. Yeah, we'll do. And yeah, I'm sure the at the 3k challenge. bracket, those two tangos are really gonna make a big difference, Grant. That's Ooh, gonna be. You there. never know. You know? <laughs> That's true. Uh oh, Masoka too. He's actually in a little bit of trouble here. He kicks the bird away after an Icarus dive forward. Oh God. The first hit bash, the ruthless, faceless void comes in and ends that party quick. Though all the while down bottom, Ben Jazz looking to finish off this tower. He pops the rage. The glyph comes out in retaliation, but he will go in for the last hits here. It's another tower down, and he goes to another core of not today. Up top, actually, Batrider putting some decent pressure on this tier one, too. Making some yeah, good progress good in that four stack. Yeah, they're doing a good job pushing, but... Like we just saw, not today was, I mean, clearly more farmed, but one good chrono from FDL, and, they, and they, I mean, they had a 2 for 0 trade bottom lane. Yep. It, it, I think it's just, it's, these chronos are going to have to be on point. A chrono with a Sunray, a Sunstrike, I mean, they, they just have the team fight. like we said. It's all about not today avoiding those team fights. Mm-hmm. All right, well, level 6 now up on the Earth Spirit. That's a big tool if they do want to take some fights. Big damage dealer there. And the Witch Doctor is also level 7. That next point in stun, the cask takes another bounce. All good oh. stuff going the way of not today. Close call for the Bat Rider up in the top lane. They are still holding, still holding on to a decent lead. About 5k net worth, uh, 1500 XP. And, and Lloyd, Vanguard. Okay. Yeah, like he just traded like five hits with Benjaz. Neither of them did any damage to each other. <laughs> Oh, there oh. we go. When, when he gets a bash, he actually does a lot of damage. Oh my. The sun strike? What? That's a kill. Yeah, right now, Ben Jazz is just sitting wow. there looking at his keyboard like, what actually just happened? I was yeah, that, fine that was two seconds three ago. Three bashes, right? In four hits? Yeah, that's not supposed to happen. And oh, right God. Purifying Flames mid lane right in on the Bat Rider. Huge damage. Oracle secures the kill. That is a nasty combo. The Flames on top of the Sun Ray. What are you going to do there? Now the cast starts bouncing around. MJW taking big damage. The Death Ward going down. He's going to try to TP out. It looks like he will. Supernova comes through. Will go off. Catches a stun on Leo style. But now they silence him up. Spirit Lance flies through. Icarus dive out. Phoenix will live. Oh, Stan King. Did he hang around too long here? Rolling Boulder forward. Off the mark. Sunray trying to heal him up. But he will make it past the tree line. Now some TPs coming in. MJW comes back in. Sets up the Sun Strike. It misses. But Void's here, no Chronosphere. He's still going to try and chase him down. On the backside, they find the Earth Spirit. Low on mana, low on health. Pops the wand, able to roll over the ravine. Oh, but there's a bird waiting. Franz just going to lay some right clicks, and Oracle gets him with the Purifying Flames. Void still trying to chase down the Witch Doctor. May Maze. Oh. Wow, that was, uh, that was like a, a, a minute-long chase, which resulted in one kill on the Earth Spirit. Oh, no. Oh, poor Invoker CCC. up top. They go right in on him. Blink Dagger Lasso. He throws a wild Sun Strike, and it's not going to connect. Jeez. Yeah, I think at this point, he's actually fine. I mean, I'm sure he's not fine dying, but he has his Midas. He actually almost has a drum now, and he's at a terrible game, and he is not that underfarmed because the Sun Strike kills, though. Yeah, that's true. Four, five, and one. It feels like that record would be a lot worse, but the Sun Strike kills have made all the difference in the world. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Earth Spirit with the surprise inside, rolling on down. They see MJW. He's going to kick it out. He connects with the stun. Infest Bomb out. Nope, they're going to hold on to it for now. Oh, oh this is a mistake. Uh, ben Jazz says, Rage TP, please. See you later. Okay. That's, that's one thing. They don't really have, besides the Bash they and Cold Snap, they have no stuns. I mean, Oracle's Q doesn't stop TPs. It just stops you in your tracks. Yep, it's a, it's a root. A root, indeed. An but immobile. a bear's root stops TPs. Well, okay. It's an immobilize, not a root. <laughs> <laughs> not root gaming. RIP. Is, is, Void, is Void going for uh, the old Radiance here? The the Waga Classic? I, I believe it is. I think... I remember because Bees and Waga talk, and I'm, I remember they both liked this build like three years ago when it wasn't even a build. And they talked <laughs> about it, so I would not doubt if they win it. I would be disappointed, but they're, I, I'm not mad. Three, three years ago, they're just talking about this sick <laughs> Vanguard Void build, yeah. build, and everyone's like, who are these idiots? What is going on? Three years later, 
Waga's just sitting back like, yeah, that's me, baby. Three years <laughs> in the works. And that's going to be a free tower top now. Top it sure is. Easy one for the invoker. No glyph even used, even though it was up. One of my pet peeves. All good. Yep. Glyph it or ticket. Mm -hmm. And this could be a tier two push, and they are all, oh, man. Invis I think Bat this Rider. depends on. Yeah, and this could be really good. Do they have sentries on anyone? They sure I don't. Don't think so. Nope. No detection down. The smoke from Witch Doctor. They're going to wrap around they here. They see him, though. Bat Rider being very defensive here. His positioning's a bit off. Chrono comes out and catches on three. Oh, my. It's a beautiful setup. They'll lose their Oracle, but I think they'll take it. Supernova actually ends up getting popped as well. It's a two for two off the bat. Now Leo style on the run. Ben Jazz left behind, and the right clicks are going to be enough to bring him down. It looked promising for not today, but FDL get the catch. The Void with the big Chrono. Oh, my. Beautiful setup there. Shame the Supernova couldn't go off. Very ambitious positioning from the Phoenix. But it does work out in the end for not today. Yeah, I'm looking at that stat. I mean, Biza, is, he just hit a three-man Chrono, no teammates. And, I, yeah, Biza is, he's playing it perfectly. He may not have the most damage, but he set him the rest of his team to do the damage with Chronos like that. Mm-hmm. And we look at this net worth difference now. And it was a 5K lead for not today. And now it's about a 1K lead for FDL. They're actually taking control of this game. PL still the number one farmer, but, well, everyone else starting to lag behind a little bit as FDL closed that gap. Yeah, and Phoenix with an Aether Lens. The next Chrono, if he has an Aether Lens, the amount of damage... He was hitting three people with the Sunray last fight, and that's why they all died. If he has an Aether Lens doing that, and the Bat Rider isn't invisible, not today is just in a lot of trouble. It and they won the laning phase, like we said, but FDL just has a team fight. There's no doubt about that. FDL had the better team fight. Yeah, it's really shining through at this point. And that, I mean, that last fight for not today also didn't really start uh, with, with a dream. You know, the Bat Rider went around the side sort of thinking that they weren't going to get jumped on, and he wasn't really in a great position to try and counter initiate or even catch the void before he could chrono. So we'll see. Not today lingering around the bottom rune. They're not even going to bother smoking. They're just going to walk on in. Surprise! Looks like that the ward sees him. Yep, the ward sees him. Uh oh. Yep. Vision right into that entryway there. FDL MJW's is gone. Are they gonna make it back in time? Meanwhile, in the top lane, they're going on the Witch Doctor Sun Strike. Not gonna matter. They jump right on the Invoker. Oh no. CC lingers a bit too long, but now the Sunray does a lot of return damage, tops everybody off, and now they're on the hunt. Void looking for Ben Jazz as he moves through the trees. Time walk forward. He's got himself an alacrity. There's the uh, Chrono. No, no Sunstrike, sun strike, but they don't need it. Void gets credit for the kill, and that's a mega kill streak now. Talk about your all-time backfires for not today. And I, I feel like FTL kind of baited that out. They had the ward. They knew it was coming the entire time, and CC and C's like, oh, I have an Oracle behind me. I'll never die. And, well, they worked out. They just get a counter kill on the, the big core of not today. Mm -hmm. The second biggest core. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, Mech no up on the Nature's up. Prophet. Okay. Kind of an old school build here. He's going for this very tanky build. Yeah, I think him and him and Snake King do that a lot. I think the two big uh, Nature's Prophet players, they love the Phase Boots oh, Mech's drum. Like, they, those two go it every time. I don't know if it's a, a them thing. I've seen it other times, but... Yeah. Th you don't see it that much, though. Answer. Yeah, the, the sustainability... I've, I've been using that word like for the last two weeks. It seems that that's what I would call this patch. You know, you had the the spin to win patch with jug control. This one's all about sustainability. I mean, the heals coming out from FDL are just insane. They can win these long two minute team fights we've seen because of it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing that's crazy about Sunray. If it just healed or just did damage, it would be an okay spell. The fact that it does both, we can catch people in these little corridors and something like a Chrono where you're healing your team and destroying your opponents. It's just ridiculous. You know, it's like. An AOE Bane Brain Sap over time, kind of. Yep, and Brain Sap is a pretty damn good spell itself, and uh, that's yep. not even AOE. Yeah, exactly. There you go. So, Aether Lens is up, and on the dire side, Witch Doctor, Doctor actually gets a gem under his command here. Interesting that's choice. That's smart. I, I think, I mean, the only way they're winning this is by superior, like, they, they need pickoffs with the Bat Rider next, and the best way to do that is kill the other team's vision. Yeah. Also, I know you saw Void's item. Oh, God. What is it? The relic is here. What if it's here. a divine rapier? What if it is? You know, he thought to himself, <sighs> you know, I've got Vanguard. I've got Time Walk. I'm basically unkillable. So, rapier? Might as well. 
Guys, it's a best of one. They'll be surprised. Maybe, hey. Fingers crossed. And I don't know. FDL's lineup, this is when they're they're perfectly in there. Just a two or three man chrono by faceless void. The sun ray on him. Sunstrike hits on someone, peer damage, and they're just dead. Mm hmm. Yeah, they're feeling pretty prime here. Invoker split pushing in the top. He's got BOTs, but they're down for another 20 seconds or so. MJW has his teleport, just farming away in the jungle. Not today, are all grouped up in the bottom. They're going to pressure this tier two. They force out the glyph from FDL, who are meanwhile smoked up, moving through the mid lane. Looks like they're going to try to force Not Today back and then possibly catch him with the smoke in their own jungle. Bat Rider goes right in onto the Invoker, though. He's going to pull him into the reinforcements. Oh, this Invoker's in big trouble. Defusal Blade slows him down. They try to come in to save him, but MJW can't get there in time. It's a noble effort from FDL, but it doesn't work the way they would have hoped. They go right in onto the PL. They catch him with a Chrono. Sunstrike, or <laughs> Sun Ray, rather, is there. And Phoenix will get credit for the kill onto the PL. And that is just a lot of gold. And they can just do that. They can, if they want, they can just hunt people like that with Faceless Void, Chrono, and a Sun Ray or Sun Strike, and any hero's dead at this point. Mm hmm. Pretty much. And, yeah, look at the net worth. I, Invoker's only 900 down from the top, and he has six deaths right now. He That's has insane. half their deaths. He's just. And, and a lot of these deaths, like, he shouldn't be having, but the fact that they're not really affecting the team, it's kind of funny. Oh, my bad. I yeah. see that he's died. Yeah, Oracle got initiated on. He tried to TP out. Nice stun from the Witch Doctor. Lasso, going to be stuck on cooldown here. Void. I don't know if he lives here. He's going to have a time walk in about two seconds, but a lot of damage is coming his way. They've got a silence. He's going to be off in one, but he can't quite make it out. Invoker uh -oh. comes in and tries to save him, but now it's going to cost him his life instead. Oh, my. Not today. Getting a series of freebies there. That's unfortunate. Yeah, that is definitely unfortunate it's for big FDL. Swing. Not today. Yeah, they're like, all right, we'll take that. Just they, they killed Invoker twice and the Void once. Yeah, 2K yes. swing. Okay. Yeah, this Invoker needs to just, uh, I think, maybe a deep breath. Uh, uh, maybe sip his Minute Maid Lemonade if he has it. It's Soylent. And just folk refocus and, uh, oh, bottom lane. MJW, he's going to try to TP out. But hey, 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 there's a Flame Break. They've got the damage and the profit falls. He has picked up a Maelstrom now. This is yeah. the Snake King build, isn't it? Yeah, this is MJW Snake King. They, those, I know they're two friends, and I'm sure their builds are the same, but this PL is extremely scary now. He can solo He can solo kill the Void almost by himself now with the mana burn, taking away his mana to Q. Mm -hmm. This is very scary for Radiant now. Yeah, Back and forth. PL's now at this point where he's at level 17. He's got the third point in Juxtapose, so there's illusions aplenty. And, yeah, that mana just evaporates. It's really hard for the Void now. He has to catch him and make it happen. He still doesn't have the Radiance either. It feels like he's had this Relic forever. 900 gold, so he's pretty close. But kind of like you were pointing out, the Void does not farm particularly fast. He's good for setting up team fights and getting pickoffs, but... In terms of just raw farming power, he's a bit lackluster. But boy, do I miss the days of Battle Fury Void, Grant. Man, where did they go? Yeah, where did they go? I still remember the, the famous Dota 1 build. It was, I don't even want it. It was like a 2007 tournament. It was uh, against the Merlini team, and some Void went double Battle Fury. And it was actually so ridiculously good with how bad people positioned back then. <laughs> it was like the, one of the biggest upsets of all time back then. It was just hilarious. You just cleave it's, down the whole team. I mean, that is... That, yeah a noob cannon it's crazy to think how far we've come even since like early early han days even like that was later than dota one and yeah. just how good the average person is now is kind of mind-boggling isn't it insane that you get a courier and wards almost every game now in most brackets like it's just pretty wild how many, how many yeah, tools crazy. out there have been educated like a lot of like han actually just gave you a courier right didn't they just give up it was like all right the community's garbage we're just going to give you a courier. Fuck it. Here you go. Every team starts with one. That was a Han thing, I think. Yeah, it was. Yeah, there you go. Oh, and this, okay. Radiance up now. Invoker not with him. He has Boots of Trail. No, that's Orange not with him. Oh, it's MJW. That's fine. So they have Boots of Trail, Invoker, and Teleport on NP. They, either of those can split push and come into the fight. And one big chrono here, and the game can almost be over. Oh, and they see him. Yep, Lifestealer breaks the smoke. Are they going to chrono just for this? They certainly are. Benjaz has the rage on, but it'll expire. Sunstrike comes through, and the Lifestealer dies. Void goes in onto the Bat Rider. Cask bouncing around the back line, but MJW gets the clear vision with the trees on the high ground. 
FDL. They're just going to keep sieging here. Tier 2 tower ripe for the taken. Not today. Up on the high ground. They still have a Blink Dagger Bat Rider ready to initiate. Yeah, but in a buyback on Nix. They, they, they are willing to just... Oh, wow. I, I, it's a double I'm damage they void, there. though. Yeah, that's true. You just can't. Yeah, that's smart. And they're just going to get out and farm, so... You know what the craziest thing to me right now is? Mm. If you had... Oh, I mean, it's going to happen at... I, I don't know who to ask. What's going to happen at the TI6 Regional American Qualifiers? You know the only team that can actually get invited is FDL. Why? Every other, every other team's made a roster change. Literally every team has made a roster change. Hmm. If, if you think about the tier two teams, and you name them to me, I'll tell you who changed. Hmm. Shazam lost FGG, or SVG. Dragneel already changed two players. All the South American teams have changed. Infamous just picked up Demon, so that's crazy. Yeah, I saw that. Off yeah, to that, Peru, I, huh? Yeah, Demi so, and so Peru. I, yeah, I just can't wait to see what Valve does. There's literally them and Evernova are the only two teams who have not made roster changes. It'll be interesting to see what Valve chooses that to do. That is there. pretty nuts. I, you know, what you're saying makes total sense given the the historic nature of the region. But wow, I I don't know what they're gonna do. That's, that bad, that's kind yeah. of a stumper. It it could just be really fun. The open qualifiers might be the funnest thing we've ever seen. Yeah, there you go. TI six hub. Let's go. Let's go. Woo. And wow, okay, so Manta, PL, this PL really just wants to catch Void out by himself because he can solo kill him, and then they, they need a push from that. It, I mean, that's pretty much what not today has to do, just one one by one pickoffs. Yeah, this is the, the best of one nature, or the nature of best of ones right here. Both teams now getting to that point where a lost team fight is so costly that they're being so much more uh, careful with their positioning. Yep. This is going to be a free road jam, farming. Though. Yeah, that's good. Oh, the scan. Maybe it. I mean, can they rotate that quick? I don't think they can. I don't think so. The Sunstrike comes out. They see how much HP Roche has, and yeah, they don't even try for it. Void just continues on farming. It will be a free Roche. So that's an Aegis probably going the way of Benjaz here. He's also picked up a Desolator. So Lifesteal are just going for good right click items that give him a, a big buff right now. Relatively low ticket items. S and Y to go with the armlet. He is nasty, though, hitting for nearly 300 a pop, plus Feast. Now they've got the Infest Bomb. Not today are ready to fight. They're hot with this token. Oh, yeah, Leo it's going to be how quick. He's not even waiting for his team. He's just going to go straight in. Stan King keeps himself alive with the False Promise. Now he's going to try to TP out, and I think he's good. Meanwhile, on the nice back side, Chrono comes out, catches two. They're going to bring down the Bat Rider. Death War doing a lot of damage here. Ben Jazz still in the front lines. The Phoenix Egg. It's going to start going, but Leo Sile getting low. He gets caught by the Tornado. It's actually enough to proc the Aegis. Benjaz now starting to get kited around. It's looking like a lost fight for not today. They're just running out of reinforcements here. Benjaz finally gets brought down, and on the backside, Leo Sile has to blink out when he comes back to life. And Where'd they MJW. all go, Grant? I know, and MJW is already in their base. He's like, that was a quick win. We'll just take your base. That was, that was insane. It looked like a good fight for not today. They're the ones that initiated that whole thing. Yeah, the, they killed the Oracle, so it was a 4v5, but I, I don't know. Biza, Biza's Chronos have been near perfect this game. He captured three of them, and then the Batrider BKB'd right out of Chrono with 100 HP and just died. And yeah. they just kited around that. They kited around the Nyx, even with Rage. Like, it doesn't do much. Yeah, back in game here. Looks like FDL are just going to be able to clear out this entire lane of barracks. It seemed like for a moment they're not today would pick a fight to try to make a small hold, but... It won't happen. And now outside of the base, they're going to move into where the PL is. He's got himself the Manta style. They could still catch him here. He blinks to the low ground, and now he's just going to TP out. Okay. Stray Tornado, though, and he could have got caught there. It's a bit risky. Yeah, that was actually uh, in the last team fight. It was a great Tornado. The Phoenix had one hit left on his egg, and the Tornado threw a PL for two seconds, and the egg exploded, and yeah, the Phoenix just that. came back alive. That was, that was good. Yeah. FDL is definitely one of those. It's crazy to see. I mean, we, we, we always talk about the Manila Open qualifiers in the top four, and they just they look good as a team. Like, we saw them lose the, the early game, but they, they don't get flustered, it seems. I think that's a, a good quality to have. Yeah, absolutely. Profit farming forward in the lane here. It looked like not today. We're going to have a go at a gank. Instead, they just back out. Leo Style gets himself a bounty rune, goes right back to farming. Bat Rider. 
actually uses his 9 second BKB. He was in pretty deep. There are a lot of enemies nearby. It might have saved his life, honestly, but that's still a 9 second BKB charge. Not the way you want to use that. Yeah, especially when you used your 10 second and died immediately, so your, your best two BKBs have been used for, for not. Yep. Here we go. Tier 1 tower falls. Only one outer tower remaining. They're going to clear out these creep waves. The Mjolnir now up on the Prophet, so he's got that static charge buff. Oh, they find the Earth Spirit. Great use of the Sprout from the Nature's Prophet, and they're going to get him. They've got the Interrupt with the Cold Snap. No TP out for you, and this is going to be the end of this Tier 2 tower. FDL getting so much momentum out of this, Grant. And they haven't even used any of their big spells yet. They've still got the Chrono. They've still got the Supernova. I think they just keep on going. They couldn't. I was looking up. Franz is actually going for an Axe second item after Aether Lens on the Phoenix. And what I just realized, that's that's like a refresher orb for the Invoker. Because his spells aren't technically his ultimate. I just realized how good that is for him. Yeah, actually, you're right. That's insane. That's probably why they're doing it. Yeah, that makes... Wow. That's really well, smart. They don't go for the high ground push, but uh, I think FDL definitely happy with their spoils for that. All of a sudden, this game is way in their favor. Nice. Nearly 10k net worth. XP still about leveled out, but... They have to be feeling good at this stage. What are you looking at in terms of item progression? Oracles picked up the Glimmer Cape, BKB up on the Invoker. Where does Void go from here? Is this just a He's... Manta style? Yeah, it looks yep, like it. Yep, it is. I think he goes Manta, and uh, most likely he'll probably finish the Abyssal after that. He already has the Vanguard, so... Mm-hmm. Wow. 68% win rate with the, the Radiance Faceless. Thanks, Waga. <laughs> Oh, and this could Thanks, be... Oh, Warrior. no. Smoke oh, they rotation. go past the Witch Doctor. Wow, that was he, close. He, he rolls all but Massacow 2, or their manager, he is looking dead. Yep, manager goes down, and now the Bat Riders. This is next BKB, it sure is, and he's going to die almost immediately after. Oh, no. Oh, the gem. Do they see it? Yeah, it looks like do. Oracle's going to go back for it. That is uh, a sad story for this Bat Rider. BKB was just not the item to go here. It's a curse. A curse and a bar. And they're just going to lose their... They might lose their entire base before Bat Rider's back alive. Yeah, they just go but right for high ground. But oh, he's TPing back. He's not going to force their hand. I guess he has to, though. Illusions will linger nearby a little bit longer. Now that the Tier 3 is down, they go right onto Barracks. Ranged falls first. Melee shortly after. FDL, do they stick around? Do they go back? Ben Jazz does TP home. Prophet's already made it out, and now it looks like they just disengaged. There is still a Chronosphere, though. He's also got a Supernova. He drops the Chrono. Sunray comes across. He decides, hey, maybe we can actually fight this, but he doesn't have the attack speed. That was kind of awkward. And now Stan King's going to be the one that gets left behind. False promise. Okay, he's got a TP. He's holding on to the gem. Is there any way that he can make it out here? And that answer is no. Gem hits the deck. Oh, the Phoenix almost comes in. He doesn't have the Agonims with him, but it's still enough damage. Oh, no. Now the buyback from the PL. Not today. In big trouble. They're going to catch the Witch Doctor. He falls. No buyback there. Lifestealer still alive. Now a lasso. They pull the Invoker back in. PL trying to do as much damage as he can, but now the BKBs get popped. Deafening Blast keeps Franz alive. They'll kill the Bat Rider. Now they'll get Leo Style as well. It looks like one more. They can't quite find him, but it doesn't matter. GG's been called. Not today. Throw in the towel. And that'll be the end of their run here in Canada Cup. It's FDL that takes it. And, yeah, not today. They looked so good in the beginning. They they did what they needed to do in lanes. But I think FDL almost baited him into it because the Invoker, he died so many times, but he was still farmed. The Void, like, they want to group up. That's how Void farms. He farms kills. He farms assists just being around. He doesn't flash farm. And... Once we hit the mid game, he, he did plenty of that. 8, 1, and 14. Yeah, no doubt. It really just felt like the team fight shined through. I mean, yep. we talked about it a lot in the draft, and they kind of had that ease of execution. I feel like you wouldn't always say that with, uh, you know, like a, a Chronosphere type lineup, but with the, the global setup, it's really pretty easy. It's a long duration stun. You throw a Wrath of Nature, you throw a Sun Strike, and all of a sudden you're picking up kills left and right. So. Pretty impressive stuff. They'll have Shazam waiting for them next. That's going to be our BO3 right around the corner. Scheduled to start in about 20 minutes. So stick around because we've got more Dota 2 coming your way. I'm Zayori. He's Grand Grant. Thank you for joining us here for Canada Cup Season 7. We're coming back after this.